Welcome to Digital Discipleship to my CA family. My name is Hiram, one of the Community Life pastors here on staff at our church, specifically for our Fusion Young Adults community. So if you are 18 to 35, I want to personally invite you to come join us on Thursday nights for our Fusion service happening at 7 o'clock here on the north side. But before we get started today in Digital Discipleship, I want us to consider a question. And the question is this, what does a fresh start look like in this season? This question was inspired to me when I was grabbing coffee with a young adult in the community and I had asked him, hey, coming out of this pandemic, where do you feel like the Lord has you in this season? And he simply responded to me with this, I am looking for a fresh start. And it had me thinking about what does it look like to have a fresh start coming out of this pandemic? So many of us can agree that this last year and a half, last year and a half has been one of the toughest years of our lives. We experienced hardships like never before. But before we consider this questions, let me pray. Lord Jesus, we're so thankful for your word, Lord. We're so thankful for uh, digital discipleship, Lord. And Lord, I pray as we consider the question of what it looks like to have a fresh start in this season, I pray that your word would just be sown into our hearts today, Jesus. And it's in your mighty name we pray, Jesus. Amen and amen. Let's start by defining what a fresh start means. I believe that when people... Uh, tell me that they want a fresh start or when they say they want a fresh start, what they are actually saying to me is that I want a completely different way in the way that I do things. I want a complete change in my life, my routine, my rhythms, my schedule. And I firmly believe that there are two ways that we can get off to a fresh start in this season. So if you have your Bible, I want us to jump to Luke chapter 13, verse 10. So grab your Bible. And scripture says this. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and there was a woman who had a disabling spirit for 18 years of her life. She was bent over and could not fully straighten herself. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said to her, Woman, you are freed from your disability. And he laid his hands on her. Immediately she was made straight and she glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, said to the people, There are six days in which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. Then the Lord answered him, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to water it? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day? As he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame, and all the people rejoiced at all the glorious things that were done by him. So one thing to, to note, one thing that is important to understand about the first century is that their system was based on an honor and shame system. Your honor was everything during that time. Uh, your reputation, uh, the way that the public perceived you, it was literally everything for, for a Jewish person in the first century. And the opposite is true. Your shame was the worst thing that you could have had. And for a woman who was a, who was crippled by a spirit for 18 years of her life, this was probably one of the most shameful things that she could experience in this culture. She would have been considered an outcast. And that's what it would have been like for this woman. She would have felt pushed away from her own community. She would have felt casted away from her own community. She would not actually have been invited to come to these synagogues. Her whole life, she probably was excited about becoming Messiah in Jesus Christ and because she had heard about all the prophecies concerning him and her own community would not have let her be a part of those things because they thought that she was cursed, that that it was a, a, a shameful thing. So she would have been rejected by society. Can you imagine the shame she must have felt, the insecurities that she might have carried simply because this was not something that was her fault to begin with? And this woman, like I said, would have been on the outskirts of town, but she had enough courage to go and seek Jesus. In other words, this woman really needed a fresh start in her life. And it starts with faith, which leads me to point number one. Our fresh start has to start with Jesus by faith. In order to launch into God's purpose for our lives here on earth, we need a fresh start in Jesus and we need faith to accomplish that. She was seeking for a fresh start and did that despite what society may have thought about her condition. To me, she is one of the bravest people in history. Like literally, she's one of the bravest people that I've ever read about. 
some of us are looking for fresh starts in all the wrong places. We look for a fresh start in a relationship, a new job, uh, 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 new friends, uh, a new city. When in reality, we have to find our fresh start in Jesus and just him. It has to start with him. If your fresh start is not found in Jesus, what I've come to learn to be true is that I am always going to feel let down. Like I'm walking with no purpose. I am feeling awful about myself. So, but when I'm, when my purpose is found in Jesus, everything is so much better. Verse 13 even says this from this passage. It says, then he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and praised God. A fresh start also entails that we let go of the past. Some of us are still holding on to things that Jesus has already healed us from, has forgiven us for. And if you hold on to your past, then ultimately our past is brought into our future and our future becomes our reality. And, and if we don't learn to let go of what's in the past, then we will never be able to step into or we will never be able to live up to what God has called us to, to do. Which leads me to my second point is that we have to find our fresh start in community. Now, this is our action step. Uh, sorry, this is our action step. The first one was our step of faith. Now, this is our step of action, finding a fresh start in people, in community. We have to step into community. We cannot do life without people. It's impossible, literally. Verse 16 says this, this dear woman, this is Jesus addressing the Pharisees because, of course, they always have an issue with Jesus doing miracles and doing good works. So, Jesus addressing them, he says, This dear woman, a daughter of Abraham, that's the important part. He calls her a daughter of Abraham. To the, to the rest of society, she would not have been considered a daughter of Abraham in the eyes of them. But to Jesus, he had a completely different story. But it says this, had been held in bondage by Satan for 18 years. Isn't it right that she be released even on the Sabbath? This shamed his enemies, but all the people rejoiced at the wonderful things that he did. You see, Jesus came for the broken. He came for people like you and I. Jesus not only restored her medical illness, but he also restored her place back in society. Um, so many of us have been casted out by maybe our friendships, our relationships, but I want to encourage you today. When Jesus looks at us, he not only looks past our mistakes, our condition, but he looks past at what the rest of society has to say about us. He calls us his child. And that's one of the greatest gifts that we can ever, uh, uh, that's one of the greatest truths that we can live out every single day is that we are a child of God. We can take we can take ownership of that. Yes, I am a child of God. Despite my mistakes, despite my flaws, I am a child of God. To society, like I said, she would not have been considered a daughter of Abraham, but Jesus called her her daughter of Abraham. And this is what the cross does for us, is that it invites us to it invites us to a seat at the table that we were never initially invited to. The cross gives us an opportunity to be a part of God's family. So many of us this last season have felt disqualified uh, for whatever reason. But can I tell you that the whole reason Jesus came so was that so that we would have an opportunity to take part in his kingdom, to take part in his mission. And one of the best parts about following Jesus is that we have a purpose, is that there are people that are tied to us. Because of this woman's faith, many people praise Jesus for the miracle that he had done for her. And that is one of the beautiful parts about stepping into faith is that people's lives are going to be changed as a result of your decision to step into faith. Um, I love what first John says. Uh, he says in first John first uh, chapter one, verse six through seven, he says, if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another in the blood of Jesus. His son purifies us all from all sin. When we are living in fellowship, what I've learned to be true is that doing fellowship with one another is going to be so much more easier. It's going to come so much more natural to me. And I've come to learn that when my relationship with Jesus is steady, um, loving and serving others uh, becomes a byproduct of that. So let's summarize. In order to have a fresh start this season of our lives, number one, we need to find a fresh start in Jesus. And I would encourage you to reach out to a pastor, reach out to a trusted friend, a trusted brother in, uh, or sister in Jesus. And um, 
I've learned that when we uh, have moments of confession, have moments to to grow and to do it alongside someone else, um, following Jesus just becomes so much more of a of an easier process. If there are things that you have to repent for or things that you have to uh, bring things to Jesus, I, I would encourage you to do those things. Number two, finding our fresh start in community. I want to encourage you to get connected to, to the local church. Um, this has been one of the best things that you can do in this season is whether that is volunteering at our weekend service or uh, joining a life group um, doing life together is always so much better this is the most practical thing that we can do in this season of our lives uh, because when we serve others we ourselves are refreshed and when we are in life groups we have people in our corners we have trusted friends that are calling out the best in us that are speaking truth uh, every single day of our lives so thank you for joining me. I'll catch you next time.